Greetings and salutations, fellow humanoids, and welcome to the seventh episode in our 100 Dusty Games series, a series in which we explore some older titles in my Steam library and determine if they were worth it in the first place. In today's episode, we are playing Neo Scavenger. The game was developed by Blue Bottle Games. It's a post-apocalypse survival roguelike with deep crafting mechanics and unforgiving combat. The game is mostly text-based with simple visuals, but don't let that fool you, there's a lot of meat in this game. So let's do some dusting, shall we? Alright, this is the character creation menu where you choose your traits. Um, I played a little bit in the past and watched a few Let's Plays uh, once upon a time, so I have a general idea of some traits that are quite good. Uh, namely, range, botany, and what was the other one? Trapping. Yeah, these three are pretty darn good as far as I know. And uh, let's see, we have three more points. Maybe we could get something interesting here. Such as... Lock picking. That's not bad. And we'll increase our metabolism and we'll go for hiding as well. So we got a flaw so that we have a little bit more points. So we got uh, ranged hiding, botany, trapping, and lock picking, which will make us quite the, a decent survivalist in the wild, I think. And so the game begins. You wake up, disoriented, slumped over the base of an empty cryosleep pod, still damp from cryofluid. The thick dust from the floor clings to your skin, leaving a clean spot on the ground, where a large O5 is painted. Across the room, there is an open door to the hallway and a broken window leading outside. Just as you gather your wits, an unearthly scream erupts from down the hall beyond the doorway. Something is coming. Fast. So right here, we could try to jump out the window, find some place to hide using our hiding skill, or use knowledge of plants. All right, uh, let's see. We could uh, try finding some place to hide, thanks to being good at, well, hiding. You quickly scan the room for a hiding place and duck behind the cryo tank nearest the window. Hopefully the light from outdoors will make it harder to see you in the nearby shadow. And with most of the room smelling of cryoprotectants, you stand a pretty good chance of having your scent mask. You hold your breath as something enters the room. Its heavy breathing becomes more nasal as it begins sniffing the air. The sniffing grows closer but continues further into the room. It lets out an annoyed bark, huffs, and starts sniffing back into the hall. A few minutes later, you're pretty sure you're out of earshot again. Standing in a cryostasis room, Though it looks like you might have been the only survivor. Let's see here. We could climb out or we could search the console for records. You check the console for any patient info and come across three records. Anton Blubber, Philip Kindred, and Lloyd Blankcheck. <laughs> and it would seem that number five is us. Philip Kindred, that's our name. And we have very little data except uh, a Detroit Savings Bank account. Right here. So, there's not much else we could do here. Let's uh, climb out of here. Decide to go outside and see if you can figure out where you are. Avoiding the broken glass, you step onto the sill and outside rustling some plants that have grown wild in the area. It's cool outside and damp, probably morning. The distant report of a gun catches your attention. You cock your head, listening, but it's over as quickly as it started. Obviously, you're not alone out here, though that doesn't necessarily comfort you. You're in the parking lot of the... Gaiji's cryo facility, but everything looks disused and in disrepair. Plants have pushed their way through the pavement and over the facility. Worst of all, nothing looks familiar. You don't remember this place or even who you are. Your frustration mounts, but you catch it and put it in check. Might as well take a look around. This basically tells us how to play a little bit. Did a little test earlier to make sure everything was going A-OK. -okay. Uh, let's go into the nearby little hamlet here. As you approach the town, there is no sign of activity. Buildings stand in ruin. Vehicles are overturned and blackened with fire. Explosion marks radiate outward from walls and pavement. In the distance, strange-looking creatures circle in the sky. Like monstrous leathery vultures, the world has drastically changed from what you knew. Some sort of cataclysm has befallen Earth, returning mankind to the Dark Ages. And along with it, your hopes of finding a warm meal and some answers. You decide to look around and scavenge what you can from the ruins. Alright, let's see what we can find here, maybe. Eh, just a little bit of junk on the ground. Let's see if maybe we could uh, get some scavenging going. 
All right, let's see. We can scavenge these abandoned houses. Hopefully, we can find a little something. Okay, so while scavenging, we can use various perks and tools. Uh, if we use hiding, for example, we do mu we are much harder to detect around, but we find less loot on average, and we all already have fairly low chances of finding anything. So let's see. Oh, wow, we found something. Beautiful. Let's uh, scavenge as much as we can, and we'll grab everything that we found by the end of it. Hopefully we can find a, some form of bag. That would be nice. Let's see here. Looks like we got a cornicola plastic bottle with uh, what might be some cornicola inside. Yep, so we could get a caffeine high out of that. We got some dubious water here. And we have this here, a rifle scope, huh? Well, we can't carry much more than that, so we're going to have to leave it behind, I think. So let's start moving out. And so we have a certain amount of moves per turn before we have to rest, so let's do so. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, seems that a feral dog is after us. Let's see if we can threaten it, perhaps. Uh, combat is mostly text-based, as you can see, with different actions chosen on the menu here. Feral dog advances towards player. It is now pretty far away, so we're going to keep trying to scare it away as it approaches. And here comes the dog. Who knows, we might die to this dog early on. So we got a... Barely affected the dog's armor punch. Yikes. Okay, so we're barely grazing the dog, and the dog is scratching us pretty bad. We are not armed, unfortunately. Aha! Uh -huh, but the dog has fallen. Okay, so as it has fallen and uh, it is bleeding and vulnerable, let's uh, do a melee search, which is basically an all-out attack. That leaves us vulnerable, but we will beat up the dog pretty good. Oh, it looks like we've fallen now. Yikes. Pull down. There you go. Get up. And attack. Get up. And attack. And lure. So without weapons, the, the fighting is uh, quite nasty. So hopefully we won't be too torn up by the end of it. We might actually die just because of that. Mm. Let's dodge. Alright, the animal's trying to move away. So let's let it. Shoo! I think uh, we got a few scratches on us, unfortunately. Oh boy. That is not good. Yep, this might be a short run. Got a whole bunch of minor cuts and bruising, and we have no clean bandages to tend to it. Alright, so let's get out of here. All right, we are now tired. Amazing. Well, we did find a plastic sled, which is actually good. You could get some uh, simple vehicles in the game, and a plastic sled, if you get a rope on it, it makes a pretty decent uh, hauling item. Seems that we are out of AP for the turn, so let's re uh, let's wait a turn. Let's uh, get to scavenging a bit, see if we can find something that will help us out. Ooh, I think we found a whole bunch of stuff there. Let's scavenge again. Nothing. All right, uh, let's see here. I actually found some shoes, which is pretty decent. So we have improper footwear, but we have, you know, basic footwear, which is nice. Let's take off our little gown here, and uh, let's see. Got some shorts, got some chips, things are looking up. Should probably see about getting some rags, too. So let's see if we can do a little bit of crafting here. If we just grab this, we could rip up our uh, hospital gown into rags, which is good. Let's see about applying some of these on our wounds. There you go. Minor cut, cut, cut. Oh yeah, boy. Problem is we're using... Uh, the bandages we're using are not clean. So 
So that might cause uh, some uh, infection down the line. Let's have some saltine crackers, I guess. That'll help. So let's make some thread out of the uh, strings that we found and see if we can get a um, if we can get a plastic sled going with some proper string here. Let's see. There we go. With two strings, with two strings, we can make a plastic sled with a strap, which we will do. And we could equip equip it as a vehicle and fill it up with stuff. There we go. Let's see here. Now, I don't know if we could do it with string. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. There we go. Made it a, a scope with a strap with the uh, rifle scope that we found. And if I'm not mistaken, we can now put it on our neck and we have a magnifying optics equipped. So we see uh, further on the uh, world map, essentially. To equip this glass bottle as a weapon just in case and uh yeah i guess we should get off here shivering minor pain and proper footwear enable the run all right we're uh we're beat up but we could still move so uh let's try moving and we won't get much by uh, just staying here actually we have hypothermia unfortunately we may have to stop soon and uh make a fire Ooh, is that a crowbar hell yeah that is a very good find All right, let's see here. Now, if we use the crowbar for looting, we actually have a larger chance of finding loot, but it uh, decreases our stealthiness, basically. Okay, that being said, let's head towards this cabin up here, maybe. It's gonna start getting dark too. So I have painful blisters on my foot, that's unfortunate. way to turn scavenge now there is a shack in the forest here which is nice let's see about finding something here ah cut myself on some broken glass that's really unlucky we had a high chance of finding loot here too great all right let's bandage that up oh boy we're not looking so cool so we should uh, see to getting water, actually. So let's uh, continue heading out. As much as I would like to stop, we are not in the best condition. Up ahead, it looks like there's some sort of abandoned car. It's covered in filth, and what glass remains is almost opaque with grime. It's been here a while. Hard to tell if it's any if there's anything inside from here. The door on the side is open, though, and it looks like a tattered sleeping bag spills through the opening. Let's throw something at the car. Pick up something you can toss and lob it at the metal husk, ducking out of sight. There's a hollow bang and rattle as it hits the roof and rolls off. Things seem to get quieter for a few moments, but soon the ambient critter noise level resumes. No sign of movement. Let's take the sleeping bag. Yoink. It's filthy. You shudder to think of all the things that might have lived in here over the years, but its warmth. It's not freezing to death beats uh, hygiene any day. Sleeping bags must be on the ground in your camp when ending a turn to have any effect. Let's leave. Cool. So as a random event, we got a sleeping bag. It's on the floor right now, so let's make sure to actually pick it up. Let's empty out this. All right. Oh boy, it's getting hard to move outside. Let's see if we can't find anything here. Oh, found a whole bunch of stuff. Torches, a multi-tool. Very nice.
Not bad, now we have a few tools. Uh, however, we are not looking good in terms of footwear and uh, water. So let's keep looking. Find a lot of empty bottles, but nothing beyond that. Player's thirsty, great. Looks like we found a little bit of water, that's nice. However, it is not clean most likely, so we should probably uh, boil it first. Let's see here. Fill some bottles with the water we found. Let's head north over here. Right, there's a few things to scavenge around here, so let's see. Night will soon be upon us. I find another crowbar and a makeshift sack. Wow, I'm getting some halfway decent stuff here. Now we already have a crowbar and it's in good condition, so maybe we could leave this one behind. We can't be uh, we can't over encumber ourselves too much. Let's try this abandoned mobile home here. Nothing. Uh oh. And we froze to death. Wow, I didn't realize we were that cold. But yeah, we should have stopped and made a fire. Alright, that was a decent practice run, but uh, as you can see, kind of rusty and don't know that much about the game, so let's try again. So let's go with the same build. And uh, actually play to our strength this time, maybe. And we're back outside. Let's try this again, shall we? Come on. Damn, no luck. Looks like we're going to have to move on from here. And another feral dog. All right, found a cabin in the woods. And we found nothing. Beautiful. And there's a locked shed here we can't open without tools. So let's go into town. Uh, hide. Hopefully he won't be able to see us. Oh wow, he completely walked around this. Beautiful. Okay, let's scavenge here. Oh wow, found a jackpot here. Let's see, we got shoes going. It's good. Proper footwear. Well, at least we have some footwear. Let's grab one of these. And let's equip ourselves with a broken bottle so we can glass anybody that messes with us. Let's equip these pants. Actually, these cargos might be better. Have more storage, but the jeans are in better condition, so maybe we should keep those. Tin foil. All right, not bad. Uh, let's keep scavenging. That's the name of the game. Nice. On more stuff. What? A patchwork hide tunic. Beautiful. Be nice and toasty. All right, let's equip these cargos. Let's 
grab that. Shoulder strap for a rifle. That's not half bad. Let's just keep stacking on some clothing on us. We're freezing. But we might start getting warmer with all of this on us. Have to see to our feet, though. That's going to be a slight problem. Yeah, I think we got hurt there. No, nope, seems like we're good. Out of moves. Uh-oh. Okay, so they haven't seen us yet. So we are not visible. We are currently, uh, well, simply not there. So let's try and sneak away. Yep, seems like we sneaked away and the guy kept moving. Which is good. Let's make sure to stay hidden here. Damn. That's some bad luck. This guy keeps walking around us, unfortunately. It's funny, he has a uh, lab coat just like us. Do we drop ours on the ground and he equipped it, I wonder? Broadhead arrow. Wow. Once again, he did not see us. This guy's starting to annoy me, to be honest. Let's see if we can't uh, find some stuff. Found some stuff. Our hoodie's in pretty good condition. That's nice. Let's put on this t shirt. All right. Come on, loot. No. Okay, let's try and get out of here. And let's unhide so we can move faster. Make it in this direction here. All right, let's scavenge the woods. Using our botany skill. Let's see here. So if you hover over the plants, you'll see that uh, you have edible berries, edible mushrooms, and you have Amanita phalloids, poisonous death caps. So if you eat random mushrooms, you could get a death cap, for example, and uh, well, that'll be that, I guess. So let's eat a whole bunch of berries. Some mushrooms here. Top ourselves up a little bit. Feeling much better. Keep moving. A little bit of water, a bit of junk. Anything in here? Painkillers, huh? Oh, actually, if we empty these out, we should be okay. Now, if you take random medicine, you could end up uh, taking, like, thyroid uh, supplements or something, which will not end well for you. So be mindful of taking, like, uh, unlabeled drugs. <laughs> Scavenge this area a little bit. Wow, oh, finding all the things. Beautiful. Okay, uh, so <laughs> the danger of wearing flip-flops is that sometimes they uh, they fall off. So uh, in this case, we now have Crocs, which will hold better, I think. Ugly as they may be, fashion is not a priority right now. So let's see here. Got yeah, yet another box. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take it, I think. 12-gauge slugs. Pretty cool. And a shtick.
So if we put that away, maybe we could hold on to these sticks here. Like so. Sticks in our hand uh, serves as a better weapon, I do believe. Very nice. So unfortunately, we cannot open that shed. So unfortunately, I don't think we could open this shed. Oh yeah, if you don't have the tools, you have a very low chance of finding loot. So let's just leave it. Maybe we'll be back. Uh, that's a dog. Crap. Well, at least now we have a branch. Alright, let's let the dog approach. Essentially, you have the range here in the middle. Just threaten the dog. Alright, the dog is now vulnerable. Let's smack it. Vulnerable and bleeding. Nice. Come on. Uh oh. Our branch has fallen apart. I think we're losing the fight. Severe pain, vulnerable, and bleeding. Looks like uh, the tides are turning here. Yikes. Player passed out from unbearable pain. Covering. And we're dead. Alright, so as you can see, there is much trial and error needed in this game, and it is unforgiving. Uh, the uh, incubation period for your survival seems to be quite brutal. Uh, I've rev rarely made it very far in the game, in which I uh, don't end up being basically chewed to death by some wild animal or uh, having my head caved in by somebody with a stick. Um... But yeah, this is when we can leave the episode. Um, despite the game being very unforgiving, I do have a soft spot for it, and I think it's pretty decent. However, it is really crusty, and uh, UI improvements could really help out in the whole uh, general accessibility to the game. But um, it stands up, and I think that the crafting system is quite elaborate from what I've tested in the, in the past. So I'm going to give it a solid... 3.5 cans out of 5 uh, for being halfway decent. And uh, I hope you liked the episode. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That being said, take care everyone, take it easy, wash your hands, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.